Okay, so what I'm going to go over here is um, something that allows the MWO to be ran in a balanced uh, Tesla mode. And um, this is called an oscillation transformer. And would it be accurate to say with the normal Lakovsky coils that the primary and secondary are so close together that they're more what you, you call them like resonator coils rather than a coil that can f rather than a coil that can freely oscillate that's detached and separate? Yeah, that's because it's a resonance Yeah. So on the so the MWOs, if you see here on, on this picture here, uh, one of the antenna stands and coil assemblies um, has the fat wire, which is a primary, and then it has the skinnier wire, which is a second, so-called secondary, that steps the voltage up to the rings. And on the opposite side here, it only has the secondary. So that primary, so it's kind of a, a lopsided type of system that is um, uh, kind of unique in the sense that it's lopsided and there's some other uh, peculiar things about it. Um, this right here the, on the Vril website, on the MWO page, there's a couple presentations that go over the difference between the Tesla and Lakovsky system. I won't go through the whole thing, but basically what it is is, sorry this picture's a little bit dark here, but on the left side, uh, this is an oscillation transformer, which is this unit right here, sitting on top of the pulse modulator. And it's perfectly balanced. It's exactly halfway between uh, both antenna setups. Uh, it's balanced in that respect. The, um, it's center tapped to the chassis for safety in a kind of a zero voltage zone on the, the primary windings. And these are symbols for capacitors, so these pulse caps are rapidly firing back and forth, back and forth, um, giving a high frequency, high voltage uh, AC output from the uh, antennas. On the right side, what, what you see is the primary here is on the coil form of one of the units, and then the opposite one just has the secondary. And so what we see is that the pulse cap is going to one side of the primary, um, and then the other side is connected to the opposite end of the primary plus the secondary, the secondary of this coil as well, plus it's connected to a ground rod. So one of the phases is grounded. So if you went up to an electrical outlet and you stuck a wire in one of the prongs and you grounded that while you're running stuff off of it, it wouldn't really make much sense. Uh, the reason Lakovsky did it is because, see, in this unit is more of a closed system where pretty much everything that leaves here is making it to the other side and vice versa. As far as the Lakovsky one, I guess you could say roughly when somebody is standing in the middle, about half possibly of what leaves one antenna is making it to the other antenna. But if you're standing in the middle and your feet are down on the floor, like barefoot, socks or whatever, um, it's finding a path through you down to the earth. And then vice versa, it happens on the other side that when it fires, maybe half will wind up at this antenna, and the other half is forced through you to Earth because it's finding you as a path uh, to ground. And so that's why this is kind of lopsided. Most people did, nobody really knew that this setup even existed until about 12, you know, 12 years ago when the European engineers came out with the reverse engineering report that actually showed what the real system was. And that was the first time that, any, that anybody had known uh, about this arrangement and why Lakovsky did that. So you can see very distinct differences. Um, who knows what Eric's cosmic induction generator is or know about it? Really? Okay, only a couple, few people, about five or six people. So Eric has, you know, obviously replicated a lot of Tesla technologies, high volt, you know, all this high voltage experiments with Tesla transformers and all this kind of thing. And there was one that had two uh, high voltage coils kind of facing and if you and long, not just the high voltage, but there was like audio, an audio component to it, and all this was kind of tied in RF stuff and and everything. And he was able to create these unusual plasma golden ratio discharges in these bulbs that nobody has ever really seen, and it only manifested like in this in that particular arrangement. You won't be able to do it with this because this doesn't have all the audio component and everything to it. 
but uh, we'll, we'll do a demo here just showing that when you bring a fluorescent tube, in the middle of it, you get like this black spot. And what that black spot is, is an entryway into counter space. Or you can say in common terminology, it's a doorway into a different dimension. And when uh, John, Kikowski, or, uh, John Polakowski, uh, seven years ago or something like that, built a small-scale uh, cosmic induction generator based on Eric's plans, and this was at the Eagle Lo Eagles Lodge, and this was being demonstrated, um, and when you look at the graphs of how much RF power and everything is there, it basically is able to demonstrate the destruction of energy. And, uh, you know, these are terms that conventionally thinking people are uncomfortable with, but uh, you can create energy and you can destroy energy. In fact, that's almost the only thing that ever does happen. But, um, but you'll be able to see that black spot in there. It's a more balanced, more efficient way to run it, and so it's distinctly different. Um, with the MWO, it only comes with these coils, so it's not like you can get this one instead of this arrangement. This is the arrangement that it comes with, because this is the Lakovsky MWO, built exactly how it's supposed to be built. Um, and then this is going to be uh, an add-on, I think about $750 or something like that. Anybody at the conference who has an MWO that wants to get the balance transformer to run it in balanced mode, and you know, it's up to you to see you know, what the difference is or whatever, People ask, well, which one is better? We really don't know because that would take a lot of time, uh, a lot of experiments and everything to come to any kind of conclusions about which one is better. But you can find out for yourself by having both arrangements and you can run in either mode. Okay, so right here um, on Vril.io on the MWO page, so I give uh, a little bit more, you know, long-winded explanation on the whole balanced versus, you know, Lakovsky method, which is basically, there's a little bit clearer picture right here of the difference between balanced and unbalanced. So if Tesla was going to do it, he would have built it like this, because this makes no sense uh, if you're going to engineer it, because why are you going to ground one phase? But that's what Lakovsky came up with. And so This is some of the charts that I mentioned on the cosmic conduction generator when John Polakowski did the um, replica of uh, one of Eric's cosmic induction generators. And I can't interpret all of this right now, but it's, it's in this presentation, cosmicconductiongenerator.com. But when you look at it, uh, it's literally uh, energy is disappearing into another dimension, you can say, which is basically that counter space. If you have questions specifically about counter space, what this is, Eric's the one to talk talk to about that. It's in a lot of his presentations. Um, and so like, you know, Star Trek subspace communicators, right? They're the little, like, a cell phone thing and you can communicate to somebody else without it taking time to get there. It's like instantaneous at almost any distance. And that's, in a way, how this kind of stuff sort of works. So they use the word subspace. Counterspace is basically the same thing. It exists. It's real, not just mathematical, but you can actually do demonstrations to show that there is validity to that idea. And uh, Eric knows more about it than, uh, than a anybody that I know. Um, and like I said, you're not going to make these type of patterns with uh, bulbs in the MWO with just this. It takes audio, a mix of RF and some lower frequency stuff, and mix it all together. But these are some of the discharges Eric was getting um, in some of these uh, experiments way back. There's some other coils. So kind of similar to this, different, you know, different arrangement. These are, I guess, um, larger diameter, so they don't take as much length. And you can see that these are smaller diameter, and they take a longer length. Uh, different arrangements like that between the radius or uh, uh, diameter and the length uh, have different applications. Some are better for like making high voltage spark stuff, or the flame speakers, and all, all this kind of stuff. So it's not like one thing's going to do everything. You have to kind of build it for whatever kind of application you're looking for. Um, this right here is just a picture, kind of hard to see, but there's actually a darkness that shows up in between it. Jeff grabbed a whole bundle of uh, these fluorescent tubes to show that, and, and, and we'll do the demo. Uh, kind of hard to get it to show up. Um, you can kind of see that dark spot floating up and down when he gets like right in the middle. And that dark spot's not supposed to be there. In that voltage field, it should just be completely lit up, and that's all that you would expect. And so this is showing that we really do have the balanced mode, and it's, and it's tuned pretty well. Uh, 
Actually, it was tuned so good that Jeff walked up to it and a, a spark jumped out almost a foot out to his arm and I cut it out of one video that I put on the website. I should have left that in. But um, that's, the right now. That's, ba that's the balanced mode. Does it do the dark spot that was set? In the Lakovsky mode? No. No, it's all lopsided and chaotic. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So, An interference pattern. Uh, Eric would be the one to ask that question. Kind of look at it like that. Yeah. We have to increase the price. We're actually going to reduce uh, the volume of units that we're going to produce, unless we can. We've already been through a few people to help at, at at the shop to get production going a little bit more, and it's like finding somebody who has you know good work ethic is um, it, it's it's tough. And so we're going to have to decrease production until we can solve that and then uh, free up some time so we can do some prototypes, uh, production-ready prototypes for some other devices that we want to put out there. Not just a seed thing, but there's some other high-voltage stuff and different devices that we're going to look at uh, producing. So we can uh, start this in um, the Lakovsky mode. If you want to kick it on, Jeff, and we can move this uh, oscillation transformer here first. We'll just get this. So this is in the lopsided mode. The only thing that we do not have here is a ground wire on one of the phases, which is going out to an earth rod. And so for the true Lukovsky mode, you know, eight foot rod, you know, three eighths or I don't know, whatever diameter, and you just pound it into the ground until there's a few inches uh, sticking out, and that's where you tie the ground wire. And so that's where it finds the path through you to the ground to that is, is, is the whole point in that. So... Hopefully that won't zap out to the, it shouldn't. Okay, so on the pulse modulator, it's basically, uh, let, me, let me point this out to see it. Okay, so it has a breaker. Normally breakers are not to be used as regular switches. That's a magnetic hydraulic circuit breaker, so it is, it doubles as a circuit breaker, but it's also intended to be used as a switch. Um, and so that's the on button. This is my, I think this is my personal unit, I don't know. But this is, this is one with an old fuse on here. That's not on the new models uh, because we didn't need it for the fan. So it's an on. When you turn it on, green light comes on. We've got the power cord right there. It just goes into 110 volt outlet. Uh, then we have a uh, timer here, similar to like a, a bathroom timer. It'll go all the way up to 30 minutes. We recommend 15. Um, I've sat in it for you know over an hour at a time. Um, Eric will sit in it for hours at a time, and. Uh, uh, then we have a variac here where you can change the intensity from zero all the way up to 100%. And, uh, and then on the side, where you, what you can't see here is that there's a little dial where you can open up the spark gap or you can close the spark gap up a little bit more, up to a minimum. And so the adjustable spark gap, what we hear is uh, some people like it, the small spark gap a little bit for more like conscious effects because the smaller the gap, uh, the less time it takes to jump it, so you actually have a little bit higher frequency at that spark gap. Uh, for more physical, I guess you could say, open up the spark gap and it takes longer to jump, so the frequency kind of slows down. And that's kind of a general rule of thumb that more of the... Because this, this has uh, conscious... This affects consciousness. There's a lot of things that happen. So one thing I will say is that it attenuates the nervous system, it relaxes it, and you know, when you have an intention subconsciously or consciously, it always corresponds to nervous impulses in the, in the um, nervous system, which is gonna cause certain muscles to contract, even if you're not conscious that those muscles are being contracted, and people are walking around in their whole lives with different tensions, their muscles are in tension from all the, their life experiences and stuff, and so the mind can influence the muscle tension and vice versa, if you're tensing your muscles to get them to relax, it works in the opposite direction that it will relieve subconscious stress, stressors that you might not even be aware of. And so when this is kind of relaxing the nervous system, and it's cumulative over time, that I guess you could say it's de-armoring the person. I think that's Reiki in terminology for, you know, like these shells and layers and stuff that we kind of build on and little by little they'll start to dissolve. So this has consciousness affecting uh, attributes to it. And as far as the physical and stuff, we can't really say that much about it. Um, but there is, uh, 
I think I might post it on the website. There's a European book that's probably the most definitive resource on research that has been done on this and uh, biological systems. And it's by the same people who put out the reverse engineering report showing what the real Lukowski setup was. So, and then another thing about this is like a wooden box style, old, like fried box and everything. So, um, when that's running, I can get up about five feet, take pictures and stuff like that, and it, and it d won't do anything to my phone, but we recommend keeping at least maybe 10 feet away. Uh, I had one phone and I got it too close, and it looked like some ghost was like flipping through all my screens and stuff on the phone and a couple of people had theirs burnt out. But with all the shielding and everything like that, um, I can literally take pictures from right this close to it and it won't bother my phone. So that's showing that there's pretty good job uh, has been done uh, with Eric's design and all the shielding stuff in there. Yeah, so if you're able to put it between So that's that's basically the costume mode. And again, the only thing missing is the uh, ground wire. We have a ground wire. Okay. So this oscillation transformer. Um, hook it up. It's as simple as just we only need one cable for antenna. So we're going to remove that black wire. And then what we can do is this red wire is bypassing the primary on this one. And so we basically just have one phase to one, one phase to the other. It's actually one phase. Okay, so this is the center cap one right here. Also for safety. So three wires coming down. One center cap goes to the chassis ground, and that's and you don't use this chassis ground in the middle uh, of the console mode. And then each of the output wires, one goes in one phase, one goes in the other phase, and then these just connect to each of the secondaries. And so this will be running in uh, uh, dollars, uh, Tesla mode, balanced one. It's doing pretty good. But, uh, what, you, what you can see is on the Lukowski mode, the side of the primary, uh, the sparks are a lot bigger, and it's quite a bit weaker on that side, and it's supposed to be that way. With this, the sparks are about uh, equal on both sides, it's a little bit stronger, because it's actually running in a more efficient mode. And uh, so you can kind of see what the difference is compared to the Lukowski mode.
coils up here are the extra coils, which does all the work. So, but you'd look at it, and most people wouldn't do it this way. It's not really a super secret or anything, and we're not keeping it invisible, you know, an opaque cover so you can't see it like these. It, that wasn't to hide it. That's just the only way we could do it, because these clear tubes, to get them at the right sizes and stuff we need, it, it's hard, kind of hard to source, and the cost gets kind of ridiculous as you go up in diameter. Um, and they'll be white. It's not going to be blue. That's just some sewer pipe that we're able to get locally to just, just get it done. But that is the production-ready prototype. They'll pretty much look identical to this, except the white pieces will be, the stands will be a little bit thinner. I think that's HDPE or something. That, that there is, uh, PVC. That's PVC. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions about this, running it like this in this Tesla mode? Or, go ahead. I'm sorry. You said you took a ground wire outside to a ground rod in the ground. So the induced voltage or uh, frequency that's going through your body will then go through uh, to the ground, right? In my experience, electricity going through your body to ground is not a good idea. What's the difference here? Why isn't there any damage to you with the... With the, with the electricity going to ground? To you, through your body to ground. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's the longitudinal business versus the transverse. Because if you have the conduction current, that would be tra transverse, right? Yeah, the high frequencies, uh, the physicist will erroneous tell you that it's the skin effect and the current doesn't flow through your body. But I know when I used to connect myself to my 3,000 watt HF transmitter, I could feel the inside of my arms heating up when I lit the 100 watt light bulb off my watch band. So that kind of uh, gets rid of the skin effect idea. What it is is uh, once you get Tesla discovered, uh, once you get above like about 20 or 30 kilocycles a second, uh, the electricity loses its electrochemical effect and it has no more damaging uh, biological properties to it. The nerves can't respond. It's too high frequency for any like electrochemical type thing because now you're working in the yeah. ether level. So I've put as many as three or four amperes of electricity through my body, which is about the same current as the electric chair with impunity, by using three megacycles instead of 60 cycles. I wouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> so in this case here, the, the impulse power of this thing is 800 kilowatts. So every time that spark gap fires, there's 800,000 watt uh, displacement current uh, multiplied by the potential between the two. And, um, and that's actually what's doing the healing action. But if you did that with DC or 60 cycles, you know, you would just uh, be a big black cloud of smoke and lots of black gooey things all over the ceiling and the floor. So high frequency is a different world. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm not so certain that that Lukoski put that grounding in there with deliberation to do any current flow through the body to begin with. No one really knows why he did that. He's not, he wasn't an electrical engineer, so it appeared to me it was a safety situation, and he had to connect the ground somewhere, so that high-voltage 60-cycle transformer in, the, uh, in his pulse modulator wouldn't end up on the antennas and electrocuting somebody in case there was a flashover. So he just grounded one side. That's my theory on the situation. Well, I know there's, um, there's not many, but I think there's one or two pictures on some of these old units where you had a ground plate for people to put their feet on. Yeah, it's so, possible that so he was trying, but we don't really yeah. know. And like you were saying, until somebody does the, you know, the proper mm -hmm. experiments, uh, clinical analysis and all that type of stuff, mm -hmm. well, we won't know until we get to that point. But my, from my experience and uh, way of looking at things, uh, I don't think that's the right way to do it. That's why I'm, I'm recommending this, but, uh, but I'm not going to stake my life on it one way or another until somebody figures it out. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's good to have both modes, because now if somebody wanted to take that effort, they could scientifically determine mm -hmm. what the benefits or the absence of benefits may be. See, and it's also possible that the rings um, could be replaced with like flat capacitor plates 
you know, some of the early tuning and development and stuff, there was uh, shorted rings with like an X in it, and the, that's basically a capacitor plate. And um, it worked well. Again, you know, what's better, rings, plates, what's the difference? That's, uh, I don't have time to figure it out. So, but at least we know that this is how Lakovsky did it with the ground wire and all that, and, you know, people can figure out the rest. It's not going to be me. So, um, Uh, with, the, with the conduction current, with the other, there were displacement, displacement. displacement, and then Hello? what was the testing? Yes, conduction current flows through conductors. Displacement current flows through the space. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Space. Like a dielectric. Yeah, it's a dielectric current. Maxwell displacement current, or capacitor current, as Steinmetz called it. Any other questions? Okay. What shows up? The yep. The darkness that shows up from. Um, yeah, the neutral spot in the tube. The neutral. Uh -huh. um, what is the advantage to that? Cosmic stuff will only appear where the dark zone is. Mm -hmm. It's like tapping into the creative forces of nature on how uh, it's a whole other world. Is that related to that universe of the tube you talked about? I can't uh, make you out from the echoes. Here, a microphone right here. Everybody, please step up to the microphone. Is that uh, cosmic thing related to the universe of the tube you talked about in one of your videos? Uh, the universal what? The, the the galaxy you saw in a tube. Yeah, yeah, that that all that stuff emanated out of that neutral plane. And that's, I'm estimating that's why, that's where the energy disappears because you can tune this thing up and there's no resistance in it, and uh, when you hit the resonant point, the thing starts consuming all this power out of the radio transmitter, but nothing's getting hot or nothing's moving or nothing's glowing. Where's the energy going? So I theorize that it's disappearing into that neutral spot. The physics explanation is, is at that point the two electrostatic potentials cancel, but um, I'm not quite satisfied with that explanation. And uh, next year's conference, um, I plan to be able to demonstrate I don't know, maybe a 2,000 watt version of this, possibly? Yeah, the parts exist for a 2,000 watt version. I have most of the tube amp and the high voltage rectifier done and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be a pretty uh, souped up unit on two Air Force military racks. One's going to have all the, um, I don't know, lower frequency stuff. Uh, one will be audio and the other one will be radio frequency. Yeah, audio and the RF. Um, that rings true uh, with the things I've been studying about the uh, it's not that it cancels out each other, it's that it's either compressing or rarefying the, the space-time medium or the ether. And it's literally compressed to where it could rebound. So that energy is not lost. It's, it could be recovered. So you're co literally compressing the medium of the vacuum to where it can bounce back or you're stretching it out to where it can restore. I think that's what's happening in that dark area. The energy goes one way out. Even though it's an oscillating cycle, the energy goes out. Once, once you hit resonance, the watt meter on the transmitter just goes more. There's no, it's gone. There's no accounting for it. In fact, I've even seen that in constant current transformers, like neon sign transformers. I did an experiment once and put a, uh, a watt meter that was not fooled by reactive power on a neon sign transformer and left it unloaded, which is dangerous because it's a constant current transformer. Uh, the watt meter went up to 500 watts, but uh, the transformer didn't get hot. Where'd the 500 watts go? 500 watts is a lot of heat after about five or 10 minutes. So where did hey, it go? Jeff. 
Counter space? I'm going to grab all the measurement stuff. I have a, I have a question. Uh, if we're having this phenomenon where the energy is like disappearing, would it, there be any way to like reverse it to make it appear, manifest itself? Well, that would suggest the possibility. But it might, uh, it might have some dire consequences if uh, it wanted to keep going. What are they, was it rubbing the, uh, you know, the genie's bottle? You don't know what's going to happen when she gets out. <laughs> have a blast shield. Something that puzzles me is you explained um, that the longitudinal waves, the harmonics increase in amplitude, which would seem to create infinite uh, waves which would bounce back and just never go away. So your idea that the energy is, is being destroyed makes sense to me because of that. Is that correct? Yeah, there's a limit to how far the, the harmonics can, you know, compound themselves because the losses are what have you and delays are going to get it in the end. But uh, we did all this with sine waves. So there, are, there were no harmonics. This is strictly coil resonance, you know, type stuff with quarter wave, and no three quarter wave or five quarter. So it's pretty pure sine waves. It's one frequency out of a radio transmitter. And I observed this all the way back into my experiments in high schools. Once the coil reaches resonance, my transmitter's transmitting somewhere. And uh, it was funny. I didn't know about Tesla. I discovered this stuff on my own with my equipment that was provided by RCA and I was farting around on the telegraph key and on the other side of uh, Mount Burdell in the next town my friend calls me up and he goes you know you're on the air <laughs> and I go no I'm not the antenna's disconnected he goes you're on the air stop farting around here someone's <laughs> gonna call the FCC so uh, so the energy was going somewhere and he managed to get a little bit of it somehow Probably the coils inside his radio receiver were getting it directly. Later, I did experiments and was able to communicate with other hams several hundred miles away just with coils connected to the earth. Okay, any, any final questions? No, I just had a quick comment um, about the telegraph lines. When they first were started, they were getting um, feedback from, from like they were getting energy out of the, the line when they weren't putting anything into it. They were getting it out of the earth because they cheated and used the earth as one of the wires. And then when the big massive solar storm episode broke out, uh, they discovered they had a cosmic receiving antenna. That's the method that I use for listening to the inside of the earth. That's why I'm after all those long abandoned phone lines in the desert. <laughs>